Friends, I'm so glad that you've tuned in today. I have my wife, Barbara, here today. We are talking about imparting success to the next generation. We're specifically gonna be talking about looking to the Word of God and seeing the Word of God as our total answer. Isaiah 54 verse 13 says, All your children shall be taught of the Lord, and great shall be the peace of your children. See how this works in our life today. Friends, I'm so glad that you've tuned in today. It's so great to have Barbara with me today. We're teaching from her brand new book, Imparting Success to the Next Generation. And we've been talking all this week about raising the next generation. And now we're gonna get into really the first aspect of that. There's three aspects that we really taught that we feel like are so important for our children. Number one is love the word. Number two is love your family. And number three is a practical trade. And we actually got this from the Jewish culture. Because when their uh, children are 13, the boys, they celebrate bar mitzvah, they give them their first copy of the scriptures, and they teach them these very pra practical aspects. You love the scriptures, right? You love your family and a practical trade. And I think so many times, we as Christians tend only to focus on the spiritual aspects, like having them in church and, and reading their Bible, but we don't talk about, you know, the physical aspects, about educational aspects, about emotional aspects, and all of these things are important. You know, we are a spirit, but we possess a soul and we live in a body, and, and we have to de develop well-rounded children that can go out and bring the light into the darkness. So I like what you brought out, that we're um, made up of three parts, the body, yes. spirit, and soul, and so all these parts of all of us need nurturing and admonishing. Right. And so we're going to just start off for an intro here. And this is found in Deuteronomy 6, 3 through 9. And I love teaching from the Old Testament and the New Testament. It all goes together. But again, in Deuteronomy 6, there's an encouragement or a charge giving to parents. And so we're going to start, we're going to read 3 through 9. It says, Therefore hear, O Israel, and be careful to observe it, that it may be well with you and that... You may multiply greatly as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you a land flowing with milk and honey. It goes on and says again, verse four, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God, the Lord is one. You shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, everything that's in you. These words which I command you today shall be in your heart. So I have that word heart circled in my Bible. Then verse seven, it goes on to say, You shall teach them diligently. What do you think the word diligently means? It means this is going to be something you do repetitive. You're going to talk about God, his word, how amazing God is over and over. It's going to be yes. a repetition in your home. It says, again, teach them the parents. It's the parents' responsibility, not the government, not the school, uh, not even the church. These things should be backed up and followed through in, in our, our children's programs, but ultimately, uh, Parents are to teach these right. things diligently to your children. And it doesn't stop there. It goes on and, and tells us how to do it. It says, and you shall talk of them when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, and when you rise up, you shall bind them as a sign on your hand, and they shall be as front lips between your eyes. You shall write them down on the door doorpost of your home and on your gates. But I like it how it says we are to love God with everything. Amen. All three areas of our life. We're to love him, and then we're to teach the word were to teach about God to our children diligently. And it's a lifestyle. It's a lifestyle of love, not law. This is a lifestyle of love. Like we get to serve God. We get to serve people. There's amazing things that we get to do because God has called us. This is so good. You know, one thing, you know, we started out, we started out in a really small town, Kit Carson, Eastern mm -hmm. Colorado, a town of about 300 in a county of about you know, 2,200 that covers 2,400 square miles. So there's less than one person per square mile in that county. And yet we never taught our kids about lack. We taught them, we get to do this. We never taught them, oh, we're so challenged because we're pastors. Mm -hmm. No, we taught them, we get to do this. We get to love God. We get to serve people. And look at this verse in verse three. I mean, this just stood out to me. 
hear Israel and observe to do the word. Mm -hmm. He says that it may be well with you and that you may increase mightily. Now we have seen that happen in our children. They are supernaturally blessed. Not, and they're all in different walks of life in different areas. Andrew's an engineer and works in the gas and oil business. Peter works in you know business. He's currently the chief operating officer of uh, Burger King of the Americas. Aaron works in the church and has this you know a, a buying and selling business that he does online. You know on top of that, but it says that you may increase mightily. That's that's what's happened in our life. Mm -hmm. That's what happened in our children's life. He says, as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you. This is the promise of God. You know, in, in a lot of the church, they act like it's a problem if you increase mightily. Mm -hmm. This is the promise of God. Mm -hmm. This is the plan of God. You know, you got to quit acting like if you have something, it's wrong. You know, there's a real discrimination in America. And it's like the, the, and the, the liberals have played on this, kind of playing the poor against the rich. And it's really a lot of these people that are pushing it, they're more wealthy than anybody. Even a lot of churches where they promote poverty rather than prosperity, the people really preaching it are actually making more than a lot of us that preach the full gospel. And, and he says here, as the Lord God of your fathers has promised you in a land that flows with milk and honey. You know, I remember years ago hearing Bill Bozanski. He grew up in Russia. And he, he dreamed of coming to America and he called it the land of milk and honey. And he was so blessed. It was in full gospel businessmen years and years ago. But you know what? If you get a blessed mentality, and I believe if you study the word of God and believe it for face value, you're going to have a blessed mentality. And what he's saying, listen, if you learn my word and you get my word in your heart and you really let my word have first place, there's if you really believe it and you're not running it with religion, there's no way that it's not going to work out to abundance in your life. Well, I like how it says in verse 5, you shall love the Lord God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength. In other words, how how is your day going to be? B, what's going to be the priorities in your day, in your family's life, if you're saying, I really love God with all my heart? In other words, I don't come home and just give God my leftover crumbs. Well, if I have time to spend time with God, I get up every day and I praise him and thank him. Um, and you spend time in the word every mm -hmm. day. I see you in there, mm -hmm. you know, reading your Bible and studying and spending time with God. It's amazing how well you hear from God. But I think a lot of it's because you spend time with him. You spend time in worship. You spend time in fellowship. You spend time in the Word on a regular basis. It's not you're just coming to church once a week and doing this because it's your Christian duty. You're not just reading your Bible, you know, your three, three and a half chapters a day because it's your Christian duty. It, it's, it's a love relationship with God and with His Word. Amen. And I just want to bring out again in verse 7, you know, about parents teaching uh, these principles about God and His Word diligently, but it says... You know, when you sit in your house, when you walk by the way, when you lie down, when you rise up, um, it's astounding to me, parents who don't want to spend any time with their children. You know, we need to talk at the, the table in the kitchen, but, you know, and do chores around the house or do chores outside and working together. But it's just talking about um, as they come home or as we're together, you know, we used to encourage them to read at least one verse a day, but we'd always ask, what has God said to you today? Or what does that mean to you? In other words... There's so many things to rejoice about what God is doing and taking that time, but really spending time with your children. And again, it's a lifestyle of love, not religion. Like we have to do this. We never taught our children. They had to go to church because they were pastor's kids. That would, that would have been terrible. Yeah, no, we get to do this. Mm -hmm. We get to go to church. We get to read the word. And, you know, we taught them to read one chapter when they were young of the Bible a day. And then we really got them to reading one chapter of the New Testament every day when they get, got a little bit older and, and read through it because you can actually read through the New Testament in a year if you read about one chapter, mm -hmm. five or six days a week, you'll mm -hmm. read through the New Testament a year. And then later, yeah. you know, we said, hey, read, and I've done this for years, you know, over 30 years, one, you know, three, four, five chapters of the Bible, about three and a half chapters of the Bible. And I just read straight through it from cover to cover. I never quit, I never stop. And it's always speaking to me. You know, the, the word is life. 
And it amazes yeah. me how I'll read something just like right now, we were just reading that. And as we read verse three, it just stuck out to me like it's never stuck out to me That's before. Cool. That, it, that if you'll do this, if you'll observe to do the word, it's gonna be well with you. You're gonna increase mightily. This is what God's promised you. You're going to a land that flows with milk and honey. You're gonna have a good life, baby. And it's because God's promises are coming to pass in your life because you've learned to live by the word. Jesus said man will not live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeds from the mouth of God. You start loving the word and letting the word work in your life and man, it will produce life. Amen, I like that. You know, that was just our introduction. Hallelujah. <laughs> I have something here in my notes, you know how important we're talking about teaching our children to love the word or as, Another culture, the Jewish culture would say the Torah are loving God, have a relationship with them. And I have it in here how important it is to observe and teach the word. That's what we just read. Yeah. Observe it and then teach it. And I love what Proverbs 10, 27 tells us. The fear of the Lord prolongs days, but the years of the wicked will be shortened. But I like that. Just the fact that you reverence, you fear, you love the Lord. Yeah. You trust in him. Yeah. It uh, prolongs your days. That's a good word. Amen. Praise God. Thank God for the word. You know the word works. It does And when work. you believe it, it'll produce what you believe and this, in your life. I want to read this. It kind of goes with what you were just talking about a minute ago, how there's a stigma, even, I wouldn't say in the church, let's say religion. Yeah. Religion teaches that you should be broke and poor. And that's just ridiculous. In Proverbs 10.22, does not say that anywhere in the Bible. Um, Proverbs 10.22 says, It's a blessing of the Lord that makes one rich, and he adds no sorrow to it. When you study that out, no toiling doesn't even increase it. It's a, a blessing of the Lord. Amen. Yeah, i got a good work, work ethic, but I know people that work a lot that have nothing. Mm -hmm. It's not because of how much I work. That's part of it, right? I taught, you know, four things, right? In, in financial success, four basics, the, the five, you know, four pillars of financial success. Number one is what you believe. Number two is, you know, what you give. Number three is your work ethic. And number four is stewardship. And those are all principles of the scripture that are taught. And if you get those things and start believing right, you know what you believe is a lot of times what you receive. I know. And, and it makes when, a place for God to work in your life. Man, I know when we were growing up, there was... You, it was really pushed that, you know, only certain careers could be wealthy. And that, that you did, it has nothing to do with a gender or what country you live in here, whether you're a man or a what woman. What career or, you're in. You or, know, my grandma told me that I should be in insurance and not be a preacher <laughs> because she thought preachers were poor people. Mm -hmm. And you know why preachers are poor people? Because they think poor. Mm -hmm. Because they don't believe the scripture many times. Um, and, and these same principles, but you know, it's working in my life and, and God is blessed. It's our life is amazing. Well, it's, I've seen this work in everyone's life that believes the Bible. Again, the blessing of the Lord is who makes one rich and adds no sorrow to it. So again, religion will teach you against prosperity and it will teach you that you're, you know, if you're wealthy, you're going to have problems and that's not in the Bible. So that's just, you know, silly. And so why don't you read, the, do you want to read uh, Isaiah 54, 13? Yeah, it talks about all of our children will be taught of the Lord and great will be the peace of your children. Now, what did you say? There? All of our children will be taught of the Lord and great will be the peace of our children. It's part of the promise mm -hmm. Amen. of the new covenant. That's what Isaiah is prophesying about mm -hmm. in Isaiah 54 is this promise of the new covenant that we have in Christ. We're going to take a break really quick and we're gonna come back and we're gonna be sharing some more about different aspects of teaching our children really to love God and love his word. So we'll be back in just a few seconds. Stay tuned. Hey everyone, I've just finished reading the final script for my wife Barbara's book on imparting success to the next generation. It's a fantastic tried and proven thing that Barbara has proved in our lives on how we can teach our children to succeed. Andrew Womack wrote the foreword. You don't want to miss it. You'll be blessed. Thanks so much. We set up the prayer team. It felt weird. I said, Dennis, pray for me. One of the ladies had taken his pulse when he first fell over, but there was no pulse. Pastor was listening to the Holy Spirit and he spoke with authority. Then he starts kind of 
rouse enough. He's been to his heart doctor. He's been to several other doctors. Nobody, nobody can find anything. <laughs> Friends, I'm so glad that you stayed with us. We are right here talking about teaching our children to love the Word of God. You know the Word of God mm -hmm. will change your life. Yeah. Job said, I've esteemed the words of your mouth more than my necessary food. David said, oh, how I love your Word. It is my meditation all the day. You through uh, your commandments have made me wiser than my instructors. Thank God for the word of God. Psalm 119, nine through 11. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed according to the, thy law. Thy word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. With my whole heart have I sought you. Oh God, let me not wander from your commands. Do you love God's word? Mm -hmm. Man, the word is amazing. So we've been talking about uh, observing and teaching the word. Another point we have here, the importance of consistency in worship. Right. You know, a lot of times, while I believe this is a known fact, your children are going to learn more from what they see you do than what you tell them to right. do. And so, you know, you were talking about how you you see me. I know our children saw me reading the Bible, but, you know, that's what I saw my mother do. Every day I saw her at the kitchen table reading her Bible and underlining it. It was just evident. She you know, was another thing your mom did, your mom was a saint. I loved her, but we would drive up to her house. I remember when they lived in Southwest uh, Lamar, Colorado, where I grew up in that, you know, outside of town in Lamar. But your mother would be there and she would just be playing the piano and just worshiping God. And you could hear it on that. They had a pretty, you know, nice home at that time. But you could hear it coming clear out into the driveway. She didn't know where the, of course, as soon as we opened the door, she quit. You know, but she would just, I just remember singing, Jesus, 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 there's something about that name. And, you know, it's just the beauty of worship. And then, you know, uh, we, you've got Hebrews 10, 25, forsake not the assembling of yourselves together as the manner of some is and so much more as we see the day of approaching. Yeah. You know, your, your parents, you know, we weren't raised in spirit-filled churches. We were raised in traditional churches, but we got saved there. Praise God. And you know what? We were taught to honor the Bible. This is one thing. My dad, he he believed the word. We didn't know what it said, but he believed it. And so if anybody preached a word, he loved them. He said, that, that person was preaching the Bible. Praise God. And then when we got in Andrew Womack's Bible study and, and really found out what the Bible said, that it wasn't just, you know, hang on and hope to God that you make it, but you can believe God, you know, for the promises of healing, of of, of prosperity, of blessing, of all these different, of peace that you could, you could, Jesus paid for these things on the cross and you can believe God for those things in your life. Man, I thought, praise God, I don't have to be sick and poor and defeated by the devil. There's a Bible full of promises I can believe. But you know, we started, but we, you know what? We were raised in the church. Man, my, my parents, you go to church and you pay your tithe. I mean, my dad, he, he drilled that into me, even as a young child, four and five years old. And you, you respect the Bible. I remember one time one of my friends went to this church and had probably 14 or 15 stairs that went up and then you went into this I'm from both sides. And one of my friends took my Bible and he threw it from the top down on the grass. And my dad took off his cowhide belt and whipped my bottom. And I'm like, Daddy, I didn't do it. He said, that's your Bible. You take care of it. <laughs> my dad was pretty strict, but mm -hmm. uh, it helped me. I was a very ornery child, and it helped me go the right direction. <laughs> Were you a passionate child, honey? I was probably a passionate, <laughs> passionate a very ornery child. <laughs> passionate child. Again, I just when you, we're going to go on to Ephesians six four, so we so we keep moving along. But as you, you were sharing the Hebrews ten twenty five about uh, not forsaking the assembling of yourselves together. Uh, another thing that people really got used to during this pandemic is just staying at home and just using technology. And it's amazing to me how many people think if they have Facebook friends, they're connected. Those aren't even real friends. Those might just follow or read something. But, you know, people <laughs> think, well, I am assembling and I am connected because I'm on Facebook. But this is actually talking about coming together, you know. And uh, I know not everybody can drive here to the church and there are praise God with technology we can connect, but you actually need to connect with people, pray yeah, with I, one another. Hey, I love it when people attend, however they attend. We have people that attend from all over the world. Mm -hmm. And you know, if you can't come here physically, if you don't have a good 
uh, church that you can go to that really is preaching the fullness of the word of God. It's great, you know, to, to get fed and to, and to come. And, you know, I, I thank God for technology. I thank God that we're preaching the word all over the world, television, internet, you know, different aspects that we're getting out there. But at the same point in time, you still need to build relationships with other believers mm -hmm. of like faith. And that will actually help you in your Christian walk. Mm -hmm. You know, in Acts chapter two, I believe it's verse 42. And this was the, the early church. They continued in the apostles doctrine. They continued in the word. They continued in fellowship. They continued in church. They continued in breaking of bread. They continued in relationships sitting down and having a meal with other believers of like faith, with people that are believe in God, and they continued in prayer. You know, that's four things that you need in your Christian life to really be healthy, I believe, as a believer. But that that's consistency in worship. Mm -hmm. You've got another scripture, Barbara. Well, I have a scripture here. We've talked a lot about um, the role of mothers. You know, we talked about our, our mothers. And there's actually things that it... As, speaks about fathers. This is Ephesians 6, 4. We're still talking about consistency in worship, uh, loving the word, teaching our children. And it says in Ephesians 6, 4, and you fathers do not provoke your children to wrath, but bring them up in the training and admonition of the, the Lord. I like what it says. Again, we've been talking about this is a lifestyle of love, not religion and law. Yeah. You don't try and break people or, right. or break them. But when you study this out, it says a father is to take them by the hand and lead them in the way that they should go. Yeah, in the nurture and admonition yes. and the care and the teaching or the Amen. care and even the warning sometimes. Mm -hmm. Admonition has Amen. to be I like sometimes that. with warning mm -hmm. of the Lord. You know, I had a good friend in in junior high and high school, and he's a pretty honored kid. I was a pretty honored kid, to be honest with you. My mom prayed for me, God, would you do something <laughs> with Lawson? I can't do anything with him. And it was about that time we met Andrew Walmack and got the Bible study, right. and I got baptized in the Holy Spirit, and then they worried about me because all I did was go to Bible study, go to church, and take mm -hmm. care of cows. But anyway, my friend, his dad had been an alcoholic, and he got mm -hmm. saved. But then the dad tried to force, you know, church, and he hadn't raised the kids in that way when they were 13, 14, mm -hmm. 15 years old. And I was at my friend's house and he showed me his fingerprints on the side of the doorway where his dad was trying to drag him by the hair of the head. <laughs> you know, and he was on, I remember one time the coach the, grabbing him by the head and him, his body swinging around. That coach would have been thrown in jail for doing that today. Mm -hmm. uh, but, but anyway, his dad, and he's just like, I'm not going. I heard the other day, my mom said that he, he communicated with her on Facebook and said, have you heard the good news? And I believe he's loving and serving Jesus today. Yeah. And that's great. You know, mm -hmm. I thank God. It took him a while to get it. It took his dad a while to get it. But his dad, you know, had changed. He got delivered from alcohol. Mm -hmm. Jesus had saved him and delivered him. And he wanted his kids to get it, but he was trying to force it. <laughs> you know, just, when you haven't been living it, it's hard to force your children into something that you're not doing yourself. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like, uh, there's another thing I want to go into. Well, Proverbs 10.4 talks about how the hand of the diligent makes rich. Just There's something about just being diligent and being consistent, right. and that brings fruit. And we have uh, just enough time here. I want to just kind of wrap it up with this. You know, we really taught our children, and we believe this, this scripture I love, it's seeing God as the answer. Yes. You know, not the stimulus check, which praise God, you know, if money comes different ways, but putting your trust in God. And this is Proverbs 3, uh, 5, five through... Two. Six. So again, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6, it says, Trust in the Lord with all your heart. Lean not on your own understanding, but in all your ways acknowledge him, and he shall direct your path. You know, it's, it's so much easier to me to put my trust in God than anything else. Amen. Praise God. And, you know, trust in the Lord with all of your heart. Trust him. Mm -hmm. Trust God with all of your soul, with all of your emotions, with all of your, you know, spiritually you're born again, so that you have faith there. But get it over in your mind, your will, and your emotions where you're really learning to lean on Jesus and rely on him. I like what it says, you know, and not in your own understanding. A lot of times we've heard people say, well, I prayed and it didn't happen. You know, sometimes we have this preconceived stereotype idea how it has to happen. Right. And it might be even something Listen, more amazing. You'd be setting yourself up for a major, you know, we've had words from God and thought things were going to happen a certain way. And, you know, God brought it another way. Mm -hmm. But the good thing is you keep believing God no yeah. matter what happens. Mm -hmm. You know, I had a recent experience where I was severely disappointed. And I'm usually a very happy, positive person, but man, it took me 
uh, you know, a week. I mean, it was just like discouragement was trying to overcome me. Now, in one day, you know, I got you told me, call Corey Stewart, Corey Paul. They've been in the church for years, you know, and they're they're out of state about six months a year, a little bit over right now. But Corey said, Lawson, it's not over yet. And that's exactly what the Lord had put in my spirit. You heard God said, call mm-hmm. Corey. Corey had a word that was in my spirit, and it isn't over yet. We're we're gonna we're gonna get the victory, praise God, you know. Mm-hmm. And this is one of the scriptures that you have is thanks be to God who always causes Amen. us to triumph and gives mm-hmm. us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ in 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14. And and whosoever is born of God overcomes this world. First John chapter 5, verse 4. So thank God, you know, we have these promises mm-hmm. and we can believe these promises. And we can not only observe and teach the word, have consistency in our own life, in our own worship, but teach our children to look to God for the Amen. answer. Amen. I think I have just enough time. It's also important that we teach our children, we talk about the victories, like re- remember to celebrate what God we'll, we'll, has done. We'll uh, go into that tomorrow. Amen. We, that's too big a subject for us <laughs> to get to in the last part of this program. So you know what? If you haven't got this book... I, I just read the, the final draft, and it is a fantastic book. It took us a long time to get it done, but it's got a foreword by Andrew Womack. Kathy Duplantis wrote a really encouraging statement about it, imparting success to the next generation. And Barbara wrote this book. This is her first book. It's fantastic. And I'm telling you, it works. A lot of these people writing books and it's really not working in their life. I'm telling you, this is tried, this is true, this is proven. Barbara's taught this for over 10 years in Bible school, but not only that, it's working in our family, it's working in our life. And I guarantee you that these principles from the scriptures will work in your life too. So you can get it on amazon.com, you can get it on our church website, kiraschristiancenter.com, or you can come here physically to church and we'd love to have you if you're in town on a Sunday morning, 8.30 or 10.30 or Wednesday night. Blessings, thanks for tuning in. It is important to keep God first, family second, and our ministry third. In a busy world, it is essential that we understand and act upon these priorities. Raising kids to love the Word, value family, and live with purpose will bring them great success. Get your copy of Barbara's new book, Imparting Success to the Next Generation, for $15.99. Go to karischristiancenter.com and order yours today. Hey everyone, I want to let you know about something coming up for our live stream congregation. We have Brother Jesse Duplantis going to be here at Karis Christian Center. You let God do what He wants, and He'll bless you beyond your wildest dreams, spiritually, physically, and financially. You're going to get some great revelation with Jesse Duplantis. Tell your friends about it. Karis Christian Center, Sunday, November 5th. Thanks for watching Grace for Today. This broadcast has been made possible by our faithful partners. If you would like to become a partner, need prayer, or have a question, please call us at 719-418-4000. Or to partner online, go to charischristiancenter.com slash give. You can write us at P.O. Box 63733, Colorado Springs, Colorado, 80962. See you next time on Grace for Today.